Hi, this is Deb, and I'm going to walk you through option one of the genetics labs, which is the Punnett Squares virtual lab. This is the worksheet that you will fill out and hand in. You'll answer these multiple choice questions, and now we get to the lab. Let me show you that. All right, first off, let's watch the video. This Punnett Square predicts the results of a cross between two heterozygous tall pea plants. Each gamete carries only one of the two alleles that controls height in pea plants. The alleles from one parent are written over the top boxes of the Punnett square, and the alleles of the other parent are written to the left of the square. To determine the possible genotypes of all offspring, each box is filled in with the alleles to the top and the left side of that box. Each box then contains two alleles, one possible genotype. You can see that there are three different possible genotypes and yet only two possible phenotypes. Okay, let's talk about those for a second. Um, if you remember, this means homozygous, they're the same, and the capital T means it's dominant. So tall is dominant, and the probability is one in four every single time that dice is rolled and the offspring is formed, that you'll end up with that genotype of capital T, capital T, and the phenotype of a tall plant. And then two out of four times, you'll end up with these guys, probability. Um, so you have a heterozygous genotype, a big and a little, dominant recessive together, and then your phenotype, because that one dominant is there, your phenotype is going to be the dominant phenotype, what it looks like. So it's they're both going to be tall. So now we come to that three to one ratio that good old Mendel discovered. Um, then one out of four times, the probability is that you'll end up with a double recessive, a short plant. And this is the only way you can have a short plant, is if it's double recessive. Okay, now click out of that, and now you're ready for the experiments. All right, now we're in the lab, and every time you want to run a new scenario, they come up randomly, 1 through 10, you reset it. See? Okay, so let's start with scenario 1. Sounds pretty good. So we want to make a cross between a heterozygous gray body. So let's look at our parent 1. It's going to be, oops heterozygous and gray, that one there in the middle, all right, with a homozygous black. And here we are. So now I've got my two guys right. We better check it. Yay! And you'll see that it then took those gametes. So these are the, I mean, those chromosomes, those alleles out. So this guy had gotten a, a dominant and a recessive, maybe from mom a dominant, dad a recessive, and since those get divided during meiosis and only half of them go in, they're divided here. And then this guy, double recessive, so put both of those down. All right? Now let's fill the squares up. So this is a big G and a little g. Yay! Little g, little g. Big G, Little g, little g, little g. Let's check offspring. Fill in the rest of the Punnett square. Oh, oh, my goodness. Genotypes I just, genotypes oh, good. All the offspring. oh, my goodness. I just did the genotypes, so I have to do the phenotypes. Yeah, sorry about that. So a capital G is going to be gray, all right? Let's see if we can get yeah. all done. Here's a double recessive, just like dad over here, for example. That's going to be black. Heterozygous, since you've got that one dominant, we're going to be gray. And double recessive, black. Now check them. Yay! So here is the one we just did. This is how you fill out your worksheet. The parent at the top was a big G, little g, genotype. The parent on the left side was were two little g's. And then when you look at your offspring, there were two of them that were big G, little g, the genotype, and two of them were little g's, double recessive. And then phenotype, that meant there were two grays and two blacks. 
because black was recessive. So just for the heck of it, your parent one was gray because that's dominant and there's a capital G there. And your parent two is black because that's recessive. All right. Okay, let's do another one. Uh, make a cross between two flies that are expected to have all vestigial winged offspring. All right, vestigial, that's this little guy here. And let's do our parents. And you'll see by looking at this that to have a vestigial wing, it has to be a double recessive. That's two lowercase L's, if I can pronounce it right. And if we want all, all recessive traits, that means our parents are going to have to be all recessive too. All right? So then we're pulling in. Oops. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. I have to check my parents first. Now, pull over. I'm going this guy with this guy. Here and here, here and here, and the same for the last one. Now, let's put our guys in there. Since it's a double recessive, they all must have vestigial wings. Check off screen. Bingo! Now I go back to my worksheet. And since that was scenario number nine, I'm going to enter all of this in the ninth row here for scenario number nine. They asked me to come at this backwards. They told me I wanted to produce only individuals with vestigial wings. All the offspring had to have vestigial wings. So the only way I could do that was to have both parents be double recessive. If I had uh, one parent in there that was heterozygous, then it, excuse me, it could have just put one, mostly all vestigial wings, but one of them could have been heterozygous. That capital L would have come through somewhere, possibly. So this is the only way I'm going to get that. So as you fill these out, you need to keep resetting it until you get each of these scenarios filled out because you want to fill out all 10 of them under the right number. All right, good luck. You're also going to finish up your this whole activity just like the human genetics did with the research question. Look up a current topic in genetics, look up anything, just Google and see what you come up with that you find interesting. Write a hundred word summary and be sure to include hyperlinks to your sources. Good luck and enjoy.